I'm delighted here we've got at the conference Ali Bouani from Incubemia. Uh, Ali, uh, thank you so much for everything you've done for this Pleasure. conference, for Pleasure. the Iran and Hotel and Tourism Investment Conference. And I think it's been a great success, don't you? I think it's a fantastic start and a foundation, which I hope together with the audience, with the delegates and the bench events, we can build upon. I guess bringing this number of people who are decision makers, uh, involved and embedded in the industry is not a short undertaking within the context of this time and the challenges around uh, this market but it's a fabulous turnout and what I'm hearing from the audience and delegates is that they're finding it extremely informative so it's a very good foundation to begin with. Well certainly your sessions have been uh, very inform informative thank so thank you for participating. Thank you. But, um, Interesting perspective from your side, really, isn't it? Because being an Iranian, but also having traveled the world, lived in Canada, you see it from both sides. So what do you think are the challenges for uh, international uh, clients of yours coming into this market? Well, I go a step further just beyond our clients. I think there's a perception of risk and uncertainty in Iran for the um, external uh, viewers, investors, and uh, decision makers. But what I find as well is that to amplify that as a challenge, there is an internal lack of preparation for the communication of how this market is different comparing to many of much more riskier markets where the very same investors are already active in. So I think it takes two and bilateral approach from both sides. On one side you have to mitigate the risk for the foreign investors, um, uh, operators, but on the other side the Persians have to really and the Iranians have to really work on granulating the opportunity and showcasing and presenting what the upside is. Not only the upside in terms of monetary and uh, investment ROIs, but the fact that there's tremendous amount of capabilities on the ground from human capital, from resources. We listen to uh, OATI, the investment uh, promotion and protection agency today. And one of my comments to the lady was, have you benchmarked this with any other investment regime around the world to see where you stack up? Because it's very comprehensive. And I would, uh, they, but they must have benchmarked, though, haven't they? Because no, what I wanted to say, Jonathan, is that to benchmark it and to run a comparative analysis and say, listen, you may think we don't have these protection layers for your investment, but we are on par for with Malaysia, for that matter. I don't know, but I'm yeah. saying we are on par with Singapore, for that matter, because that changes the, you know, the enforcement of it is a different discussion, but at least taking the message out and saying, you know... So th this is also a, a perception issue, isn't it? It is very much a perception issue, of course. I think for if you talk to many of the first-time uh, guests and delegates, majority of them will say, wow, I, I wasn't expecting Iran to be like this. Wow, this... You know, and, and many times we forget the conditions in which Iran has had uh, to perform. Uh, its resilience as an economy... Uh, as an economy and as an economic base under some of the toughest conditions, um, um, geoeconomically for that matter, you would apply the same conditions to any advanced economy. That would be really, really interesting to watch. So this resilience be should be acknowledged by the foreigners, um, in my opinion, at least. Yes, of course, there are a lot of shortcomings, but um, I, I think Iran has a lot to offer. No, I, I agree, and, and it would be certainly a very impactful message uh, to go to market with, to say you're as competitive as Singapore or, or whatever. Yeah, maybe there is a gap and a realistic gap between the um, size of the capital deployment that has taken place or been shaped in Singapore or in a hub or a base like Malaysia or China or uh, some of the other peer markets for that matter. But at least the framework is there and we are here to support and guide and help you. The rest of it is very much as well the nature of the market where you come in and when you have to outperform, perform, learn, as I said this morning, relearn and sometimes unlearn. Mm -hmm. Because the things you have learned in the past may not apply to that market. Mm -hmm. But benchmarking, for the sake of benchmarking, no, but for the sake of saying, my goodness, if I have ticked all the boxes that Malaysia has done, for that matter, or Turkey has done, why am I unable to attract foreign direct investment? 
Is it part of my communication? Should I be more outward going? Should I be more taking this message out? Or should I sell my capabilities home front? And I think there should be a very fine balance between these two. Do you think as a result of this conference, though, that we're beginning to see uh, more interest, more interest in, in investment in the country? I think, uh, listen, today I spoke about the um, diversity of the Iranian economy and in particular its uh, reliance from a GDP structure composition point of view by being only 15%. Construction is a major uh, um, economic engine uh, and, and I think as a result of that we are in hotel, hospitality, mixed use developments and real estate play. So one could only imagine that as a result of these dialogues, which I hope to be repeated not only next year here, but also at AHIC, at uh, Griff, because, you know, today you cannot just build a building and put a sign on it and expect people to come and uh, reside or to spend the night in. You have to be a holistic service provider. And in that context, the impact of the hotel and hospitality and construction uh, industry in Iran's future economic trajectory cannot be ignored. You spoke briefly there on GRIF, the Global Restaurant yes. Investment Forum, and, yes. and interesting what we heard on the panel today from uh, on the finance panel mm -hmm. talking about food and beverages number three in terms of investment interest, mm -hmm. whereas hotels, hospitality is just that, that much further below. So perhaps this conference needs to uh, adapt a little bit and take in more of the Griff uh, product? Well, I think, listen, uh, Persians by nature have a very uh, extremely rich cuisine and menu and ingredients and all of that. I think part of the dialogue should be not only the, the remarks, by the way, from the panelists that we had was very much in and around manufacturing of food and beverage. So the companies he was talking about were in dairy and FMCG. But there is no question that if you bring um, uh, adapted, harmonious uh, food and beverage concepts, whether they're standalone, whether they're in a shopping mall, whether they're in a mixed-use development or part of a hotel food and beverage offering, the upside is immense. So, and if you look at Iran's food and beverage scene, is it, it's very much extremely rich from menu and roots, but extremely uh, in its infancy days in terms of industrialization, scalability. So, for instance, you don't have that many Iranian restaurants have, have ventured out that have captured their own home market as a franchise and then have been able to take this concept to Turkey, to GCC or to other countries. So there's tremendous upside over there. We look forward, when you know Jonathan, we're very excited about Griff platform, we contribute to it as well, but I think keeping these two identities separate is much better because that market in itself can be extremely substantial. And, and I think should we have a Griff held in Tehran, the audience are different. The capital deployment by many of these entrepreneurs and business owners is different. And that's why you see the uh, ranking between hotels and restaurants. To give you an example, for a hotel, you need 250, 300 million with the rates that we hear today, heard today about uh, zoning, permissions, etc. With 200 million, you can start at least 10 new food and beverage concepts and go out. So, so Ali, just uh, uh, the foreign direct investment, what do you see the challenges to that at the moment? I think we talked about the perception, mobilization, deployment, execution, and repatriation. So when you look at foreign direct investment, it's perception, mobilization, deployment, execution, and repatriation. There are very hardly any other markets today out there that could provide the scalability of Iran's market. I think the challenge now is very much still in the banking system, that majority of the banks do not uh, have corresponding relationships with the Iranian banking sector, albeit the fact that it's increasing. But as I said today, a great part of this as well is a myopic view towards the risk perception in Iran. And I am sure that should one or two major transactions go through, whether on the aviation side or infrastructure, bankers will follow suit and will be chasing deals. 
I think Iran requires tremendous amount of delicate deal structuring. And it's just because of its nature, it's because of its endowments, it's because of its uh, GDP composition, as I said. So Iran is not going to be just a private-public partnership model, or just a foreign direct investment model, or just a sovereign wealth fund model play. Iran could be very much prime, in my opinion, for real estate investment trust funds to come and to shape and to granulate that scale of capital that is required. So I'm long on Iran uh, for, for a long time to come. And uh, it's just because, as I said, I think that uh, the whole world sees the endowment of Iran as oil and gas and petrochems. I think it's young population, it's culture, it's history, and it's passion for resilience and continuity will come to make it one of the most attractive markets, not only for our industry, but many more. No, and I, I agree with you, because how many people actually know that there's some great skiing just, well, to, just outside of Tehran, which I'm going to be experiencing in a few days' time? So, well, I uh, envy you on that one, because I cannot join on this trip, but Iran is uh, extremely well located in the Zagros and Albors mountain range, and some of the most beautiful ski resorts are there, which with a little bit of a capex and renovation and refurbishment of the lifts and the ski facilities could, in all sincerity, from, an, from a skiing, I'm not talking about uh, uh, over uh, uh, expanding or over promising, but from a pure skiing and tourism and sport uh, lens and view, compete with some of the best resorts in Europe. Well, it's tremendous. And I, I must say, I have uh, a much better perception now of Iran. And I, and I thank you for pushing us thank on you. this event and, you, and you working with us on it because I think it has tremendous potential. Well, I so. wish you and everybody involved nothing but success. And I hope that the passion for hospitality of Iranians will uh, marry the necessary commitment resources to bring the best out of this country to the world and to receive more of um, visitors, tourists, and to have a prosperous and robust economy. So thank you for that. Well, we're, we're certainly on that ride with you. Thank you, Ali.